May the Lord bless you all. And uh, we welcome you again today in, uh, in our session in uh, TV7 Rwanda. And uh, it is a pleasure for me to be back in Rwanda to continue the show we started concerning adultery that uh, uh, was already after the third part. Now we are on the fourth part, fourth, fourth part, and we believe that it's going to be another session that we are going to be blessed with by the name, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let us have a word of prayer just before we start. Heavenly Father, we humbly come to you in the name of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, asking you to be with us and to lead us. We pray that this session will be another one that will be touching people's heart to give them a means to examine themselves and to see how to do the right thing. For those who have not believed yet to hear your voice and they can come out of confusion, believe and be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of their sins and uh, uh, for them to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. May you be with us. Bless the country in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, for a reminder, I just wanted to uh, tell everyone that the first three parts we were talking about what is adultery, but we were speaking in French. This time around, I think I was advised because most of the people are speaking English and you can see I don't have any translator today. Uh, I was advised to speak and teach this uh, very sensible um, subject, but in English. We were talking about adultery and uh, for uh, those who have been following uh, uh, kindly what we said, we spoke about adultery and why God hates adultery. It is an offense to God. It is, it is a sin against God. It is a terrible offense in the eyes of God. So there must not be any society, any company, any group of people who are undermining the sin of adultery. It's an offense that can change the whole country. It's a, it's, it's a sin that is against the institution of God on marriage. God has shown us how we should marry our wives and make them live with us in peace. So we need to take the remedy that God has given to us and avoid adultery. We studied the case of the two cases of Abraham and we, we saw that in the teachings of Abraham, we saw that the man or the woman who commits adultery is punished physically. Just as Paul said, anyone who commits sexual sin sins against his own body. And this one changes, deforms the, the body. Until even the children who might be born there, God can kill. So we saw with the, the example of uh, uh, Abraham, the second one, that uh, it was an offense. And this one, this confession must be done publicly. The whole family must know what you have done so that you can be able to, to, to be forgiven. And if you have taken somebody's wife, you must not continue staying with her. We will answer the question now, for those of you who have already committed adultery and now they have realized it's wrong, what is next? So I think we'll, we'll go into this program and we'll come back to continuously uh, teaching the same thing to open people's mind and people's heart for people to understand what it is all about. Then in Deuteronomy, uh, I think we also saw the case of Yosef. Yosef repeated the same thing that he say, uh, Abraham said. It is a, uh, the same thing that God said in the case of Abraham. It is a sin against God. When the woman, somebody's wife, who's, uh, some, a woman is married, wanting to force someone to go with her. You, we saw how Yosef ran away. 
Brothers, if you care about your soul, you care about your life, don't you ever um, let yourself be taken away by this approach of this kind of women. That is an offense against God. And we saw that the Lord called it an abomination. So we read last time the Deuteronomy chapter 24, which I want to read again and continue from where we stopped. I'm going to show you this uh, Deuteronomy chapter 24, the teaching of Moses concerning adultery preached in the New Testament, as we have seen Jesus preaching it. We saw in Romans chapter, um, chapter uh, 7, Paul preaching the same thing. I'm going to come back and continue a little bit. We are going to read in uh, NIV, Deuteronomy chapter 24. If a man marries a woman, not if a man lives with a woman as a girlfriend. Boyfriend-girlfriend relationship is not tolerated by God. From the beginning, the Lord said in the beginning there to the woman, your desire will be to your own husband. If a woman has got desire, she must not take the desire to anybody else. The desire of being married, the desire of having uh, children, that one, the Lord says, it must only be given to your own husband. If the desire of a woman goes to someone else who's not her husband, this is an offense. This is an abomination. That's why men and women are not supposed to be have, having sexual intercourse before marriage. It's forbidden. The Bible says clearly that if a woman is not found virgin on the days of her wedding, according to Deuteronomy chapter 22, she has been misbehaving. She has been committing um, a prostitution while living in her father's house. A woman who keeps herself virgin for her husband to be, that man will be happy and honor this kind of woman. Even if you will be having problem, the man will still remember that he, he, he got you a virgin, he will honor you. These are the Bible values we want to restore in our, in our countries, in our societies, in our tribes, so that we can glorify God. So if a man marries a woman, who become displeasing to him because he has found something indecent about her and writes her a certificate of divorce and gives it to, uh, to her and send her from, her from his house. And if after she leaves his house, she becomes a good translation. She becomes the wife of another man which she's not supposed to do. The Bible says she, be, she leaves her husband and she becomes the wife of another man and her second husband dislikes her and writes her a certificate of divorce and gives it to her and sends her from his house. Or if the second husband dies, then, and this is the law, and this is what grace preaches as well. Then her first husband, who divorced her, is not allowed to marry her again after she has been defiled. Once your wife has been with another man, according to what we are reading here, she is not supposed to be married again by you, the husband. Because if you do, the scripture says, that would, would be detestable, an abomination in the eyes of the Lord. Even if men don't want to think it's nothing, it's something that uh, uh, it's not terrible, the Lord sees it very terrible. In the eyes of the Lord, that is detestable. Do not bring sin upon the land, the Lord your God as given to you as inheritance. So, I believe as we speak this way, you might be having a question about, what about that woman who was uh, got in um, adultery and the Lord, uh, 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 the, the Pharisees brought her to Jesus? We will answer to that question in a moment. Then, 
let's see what we are talking about here be found in the New Testament. I want us, if you are at home there, I want us to go to um, watch what the prophet of the nations said. We have already cross-examined what Jesus said in, in, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 31 and 32, where he was quoting Moses uh, in, in his teachings. Let me go back to it so that you can be refreshed because it has been quite some time I was away from the country. In Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, we're going to read from verse 31. It says this, Jesus' teaching concerning the divorce. He says, it has been said, in other words, Moses said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. This is found in Deuteronomy 24. But I tell you, you will still repeat the same thing. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except, and I want you to underline this word except, except for sexual immorality, makes her a victim of adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. We explained it on our third part of this show, saying that many churches, many pastors, many bishops believe that you can only divorce your wife when she commits adultery. That's not true. In the Bible, we have many cases of, uh, of uh, divorces where the woman did not commit adultery. We spoke about the case of Abraham again. Abraham divorced his wife, Agar. Agar never committed adultery. And you know the word of God is the same yesterday. It means Old Testament, today, New Testament, and forever in eternity. The word of God does not change. The Queen Esther replaced a queen, the Queen Vashti, in her wedding in a marriage, because the queen Vasti disobeyed her husband. She never committed adultery, but she was divorced. And the queen Esther took her crown, her place. So if you maintain that for a man to divorce his wife, uh, it can only be when she has committed adultery, that one will be not right. But here, the scripture is more specific, and I want everyone to see this scripture. And we want to correct this, uh, this uh, saying that pastors and churches are believing, which is not true. A man who divorces his wife for any other reasons, it means she's a thief, she's disobedient, she's stealing, she's uh, impolite, she, 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 she fights, she is involved in which, uh, in, in which uh, a witchcraft or she does not submit to her husband or any other reason or she commits adultery. Whenever a man divorces his wife, listen carefully, and the wife did not commit adultery, it means he was not unfaithful, she leaves the house she goes. Wherever she goes, she is exposed. She is exposed. She becomes a subject to adultery because another man as we read in Deuteronomy chapter 24 another man can come we called him Avogadro Avogadro can come and try to take Bithia who is a divorced woman still belonging to that man the reason why a divorced woman commits adultery by being with another man is because even after divorce the woman still belongs to that man. And we will see the possibility in this show what happens to a woman after divorce in this regard. So Jesus says here, as we continue, she is outside there exposed to become an adulteress because she left the house without being an adulteress. But now, in this case, when I got my wife, or Bita is gotten from the house, right-handed, committing adultery, and the husband writes a letter of divorcement and sends her away, 
This woman is not exposed to become an adulteress outside there because she's leaving the house of the, her husband as, a, as a, an adulterous woman. So she can be exposed to it if she did not commit it from the house. But if she committed from, from the house outside there, she is an adulteress already. She cannot be exposed anymore. So you can see that you can divorce your wife for every Bible reason. Now, we read last time why a divorced woman still belonged to this man. In the book of Romans chapter 7, which we read last time, I was here in, uh, in uh, Kigali. And uh, I thank God for this uh, uh, TV, TV7, that is helping us. TV7 Rwanda is doing a great and fantastic job to spread this good news for people to not be confused anymore. Because confusion and ignorance is what a true man of God should be fighting against. Because you shall know the truth. And the truth must be preached for people to know this truth. And the truth, once they believe it, will set them free. In the book of Romans chapter 7, we are going to read from verse 1. It says this. Still NIV, that's what I'm reading today. Do you not know, brothers and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law has authority of, over someone only as long as that person lives? For instance, by law, a married woman, and we insist, a married woman is bound by, uh, uh, is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. Amen. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law that binds her to him. Then, so, so then, if she has sexual relations with another man while her husband is still alive, she is called an adulteress. But if her, if her husband dies, she is released from uh, that law and is not an adulteress if she marries another man. You can see here, According to what we are reading here, the Spirit is speaking through Paul saying that once a woman is married, she is born forever until she dies. If the man is still living, she cannot have plans or manufacture plans to be with another man. That's why my sisters, I am advising you before you get married, knowing this law, do your best to scrutinize this man. Let him be a God-fearing man. Let him be someone who will be, who will be there like Jesus. Who, a man who can give himself for you. A man who will be reflecting Jesus as we are going to read in Ephesians chapter 5. So think twice. Pray, use your nails to make sure that the man you want to marry is a man like Adam, a man like Jesus, a God-fearing man. So you can see here, while her husband is living, she becomes another man's wife. It means she has sexual intercourse with another man, not even she gets married. But the moment she has sexual intercourse with another man, she is automatically called an adulteress and the marriage can be terminated. We are going to go now, what is remaining for the same case in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I want us to go there, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We are going to read this commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ given to us through the ministry of Paul. And I like Paul because Paul can tell you what he says and he mentions it. This is not the Lord, this is me. And when it's the Lord, he also says, this is not me, 
it, it is the Lord. He says, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 from verse 10. To the married, not to the boyfriend girlfriends. To the married, I give this command. Not I, Paul, but the Lord. A wife must not separate from her husband. I believe now you can be able to say why. Because if a wife separates with her husband, Jesus said what? She is exposed to become an adulterous woman. This is the reason why the command has been given here. A woman must not separate, must not separate from her husband. But if she does, if it's unbearable and the, and the only solution is for her to leave her husband, to separate with her husband, then I want you to pay attention to this and this is what is remaining for a, div a divorced woman or a separated woman from her husband. She must remain unmarried. Everybody should say amen. She must, not even she can, or she should, she must remain unmarried. In other Bible version it says single. That's the first option that a woman who does not want to be back to, 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 with, to be with her husband and she's separated, she must remain unmarried. That's the first option after the divorce. Second option, or else be weak. Consult to her husband. She is the one now to do everything now. When she feels like she still wants her husband, she still wants to be a wife, she still wants to be a, a mother. And if that one occurs to a woman who is already divorced, she must make the, the first move to come back to her husband, to reconcile to her husband. And now the Bible says, and a husband must not divorce his wife, because God hates divorce. In Hebrew, the man is Ish. In Hebrew, the woman is Isha. When you put these two words together and remove what is uh, common, you get Ya. Ya is the short of Yahweh. That's why in every marriage, when they are married according to the word of God, the presence of God, the presence of Yahweh comes there because marriage is an institution which has been given to us from the most high God himself. It's God who put in us the desire of building a family. It's God who put in us the desire of becoming a father, becoming a husband, becoming a wife, becoming a mother. And we have to respect these principles you just cannot start life in that way parent educate our children let us educate our children on how to get married on the first session I showed you that it was the father himself of the daughter who brought Eve to her husband if you are married the question would be your wife did your father in law bring her to you you must have the blessing of your parent. Also, those who have not paid the diary, I'm urging you, you must not steal someone's daughter because it will happen to you as well. Someone's daughter needs to be respected and honored. You want someone's daughter, go and knock at the door. Present yourself to the parent and say, I'm here because I've seen a flower in your, in, your, in your house and I'm willing to take the flower. Let the father interrogate you. Let the father ask you who you are and what you do. Be also ready clearly to present yourself who you are and wait for the answer from the parent. Because according to the Bible, even if the woman says yes and the father says no, there cannot be any marriage. Because according to the Bible, is the, has the father who gives his daughter in marriage. If the father says yes, and the woman says no, they cannot be marriage. Because for it to be married, it must be consented. The woman must love. The, the man also must love. Our prophet said, if you see that you cannot live without her, and the woman says she cannot live without 
you. Then at that point, get married. But if you see that you can live without her, don't start this journey called marriage because you will hurt many people and maybe eventually destroy yourself. So according to Paul here, two options we have for a, a, a divorced woman. The Bible says she is commanded to remain unmarried as a first option if she does not want to go back to this man anymore. She must not contact another marriage until the man who divorced her dies. At that time, she is now free to be married as a widow to another man. If while she is away, separated, she start a Facebook relationship with another man, she start being contacted by a former friend or anybody else, she will be called an adulteress when she commits it. Now, this is what we see Paul speaking here in the book of uh, um, uh, Matthew, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 7. Now, let's see this question that we may be asked. What if, in the case where the woman, the, the woman in, the, in, in, in Jesus' uh, uh, time, they, they brought this woman to Jesus. And I want us to go there. I think it must be John chapter 8. In the book of John chapter 8, from verse 1. I want us to read this. It says, When they all went home, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olive, I don't appear again. Um... Uh, yes, at dawn he appeared again in the temple court where all the people gathered around him and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and say to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in act of adultery. In the law of Moses, in the law Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. To start with, you can see that these people came with a woman in order to trap Jesus Christ. They did not come with the woman because they want to learn. So the reason of bringing this woman to Jesus was to trap Jesus Christ. Now, and this is what they're saying is not what Moses said. Moses said, if a man and a woman, they are both caught committing adultery, both of them need to be stoned. But here these guys, the Pharisees here, they let their friend the men go away because they were, they were against uh, Jesus and they were looking for means to accuse him. But look at what the Bible says. They were using this question as a trap in order to, to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone to her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. What was he writing? No one knows. And any interpretation that you can bring to this one, like I heard people say, he was writing their sins, uh, he was writing things, teaching them, that is, that is something you cannot prove. What is written is for us. What is not written belongs to God. So we must not be allowed to interpret what is not written. Then, when, verse 7, when they kept on questioning him, uh, well, that one we read, verse 8, 
he stooped to, to write on the ground. Verse 9, at this, at this, when Jesus spoke, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Look at the teaching of Jesus, which showed them that they were also sinners. When Jesus spoke, everyone looked in his life and saw how sinful they were. They, everyone reminded the wrong they have done in the darkness. So look, they, they are living without even talking to each other because they were guilty. Anyone could remember how he committed maybe adultery, maybe he was stealing, maybe he was involved in corruption, maybe he was, he, he was uh, uh, stealing things from the parent, someone grabbed the land, someone... So everyone remembered the wrong he has done and they were living without even confession. It was an occasion for them to repent publicly in front of this woman. It was an occasion for them to fix their lives. But the people of Satan, they don't like asking for forgiveness. They don't ask, they don't know how to acknowledge the wrong they've done. They run away. And every time you have, you have, feel it, you have ever sinned, you will run away from the presence of God. That's why when Adam committed sin, what did he do? He did like them. He ran away from the presence of the Lord to hide. Brothers and sisters, when you remember you have done something wrong, don't run away from God. Run to God. And that is a, a solution because he will accept you the way you are and he will forgive you if you acknowledge your sins and confess them. Now, the Bible says here, each and every one went and they left the woman there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Look here now. This is what I want to show you. Will Jesus tell her to go home or to go her way? Because Jesus is the, the God of the spirit of the prophets. And every prophet in the Old Testament who preached, who wrote, they were moved by the spirit of Christ as it's written in the Bible. So let's see if Christ will, will speak his own word to this woman who has committed adultery. Look, then neither do I, commend, I condemn you because she was doing this, she has done these things under ignorance. Or even if it were not under ignorance, it was a, a, an opportunity for her to meet the one who can forgive sins, Jesus Christ, the Savior. Jesus say, then neither do I condemn you, Jesus replied, go now and live your life uh, and live your life, live your life of sin. Jesus did not say, tell her, go home. But Jesus is telling her, go your way. And sin no more. If you decide to forgive your wife, yes, you can forgive your wife, but you cannot take her back anymore to be your wife. Because if you do, the scripture says, you will pollute the whole land. And for this matter, I want to show you what happened with David. Because my time is coming to an end. David, when he ran away from uh, uh, the punishment that God has uh, inflicted on him because of committing adultery, his own son, Absalom, came when David was away. And went with ten of David's wife, his father. And when she, she, he committed adultery with these ten women, it was publicly she did it because she was having he was having a bad advisor. I want everyone who has been at, who, who, who can be advised. Surround yourself with people who can who can give you good advice. If you want to burn. If you want to die, go the adultery way. You will feel what I'm talking about in the scriptures. This kind of teaching will bring the fear of the Lord in you. And you will never dare to take someone's wife or someone, someone else's divorced wife. 
And for you to be forgiven, if you have committed adultery, you took somebody's wife or a woman who has, been take, who, who has given herself to another man. Here is the solution. We are going to find it in the Bible. You must go and face the husband of that woman. You must go to that man and say, I have come here to tell you I've done something wrong against you and against the Lord. I, I took your wife and how many times we did it and whatever it happened, confess everything into details. That's the only way you can be forgiven. The woman must go back to her husband and disclose what happened with that man. He said, my husband, the way you see me here, I've been unfaithful to you. I did A, B, C, D with men, one or I don't know how many you have done. Even, even to disclose among the children here, this child is not yours. Let the men know and let the men say, I've forgiven you. Even if at that time it will cost you the marriage because the marriage will be over, but at least in front of God, you will be honest. There are people who are living in a relationship who are not honest at all. Integrity has gone away from the family long time ago. And that kind of marriage, you cannot have peace. Anything can happen. Remember, the parents are the protection of the children. If you parent, you are not living properly. What do you expect your children will be? Like mother, like daughter. Like father, like son. Father, if you want to have a good son tomorrow, behave properly now. Mothers, if you want to have a good daughters, you, have, you want to have good daughters tomorrow, behave properly now because your lifestyle is a seed you are planting for your future uh, generation. Be careful. Some of the people who are misbehaving is because of their parent. Parent, wake up. We want the society that will be built upon the word of God. We want men and women who fear God, who can do the right thing. Marriage must be honored by everyone, as the Bible says. And the bed of the wedding, of that marital union, should be exempt of adultery because God will judge the adulterers. I can tell you, as I, repeat, I said last time, the saint, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we will judge the world. We will judge every thief, every rebellious people, everyone who does not respect the parent, everyone who does not respect, uh, uh, who irritate the children. Those kind of sins, we the saints, we will judge them. But the sin of adultery is a file that is on God's table. He is the only one who will judge every adulterous man and every adulterous woman. So be careful. Amen. Now here, you have seen properly what happened. In the story of David, let me come back to it to finish. When now he did this thing, look at the next stage of, uh, of uh, Absalom. He died as he was running away. His hair, long hair. And the Bible says, man, it's good for women to have long hair. Women, it's a glory for them to have long hair. But it's not good for men, as the Bible says. For, I'm going to read it in case of questions. Now, this Absalom was having long hair. And as he was running away on the horse, he was running away. His hair got him stuck on the trees. He, he left hanging there. And uh, the man of David came and finished him. Now, the Bible says, when David was restored back, David came back to Jerusalem, and he heard what happened to his ten uh, wives. The Bible says he built for them a house. He fed them. He could take care of them with whatever they needed, but he never went back to them to be, for them to become his wives anymore. It was done. David is the father of Christ. David, what he did was a teaching and Jesus was repeating the same thing here because his father David did the same. Do not take back, as the Bible says, even if you can forgive her, but you cannot take her back as your wife anymore. Otherwise, your land will be polluted. polluted. Everything, let me read it again, what happens. In the book of uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 3, Verse 1, 
We read it last time. Allow me to read it again. As I'm closing for this session, we will continue again to answer a few more questions concerning adultery and what happens to men and women after the divorce has been done. Here we read Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 1 thus. If a man divorces his wife and she leaves him and marries another man, the question is, should he return to her again? The answer you know now is no. Why? Because if she does, that would, would, not, we say, would not the land be completely defiled? Today, if we have a lot of prostitutes in the world, we have children in the streets, we have so many things happening in our families, is because men have returned back to their wives after they've committed adultery. That is an offense. That is completely an offense. And this is linked to what was happening in the beginning. The sin that was between Adam, the serpent, and Eve. It was adultery. Look here. What did God say to Adam after this one happened? He said to Adam, because you have done this, the land, the earth is cursed because of you. It's the same curse that the man is being told here in, in Jeremiah chapter 3 and also in Deuteronomy chapter 24. So be vigilant. Next time we are going to talk about which kind of marriages God does not like. We are going to see that you are not supposed to marry the sister of your wife when your wife is still living. You are not supposed to marry, and this one we are going to see it properly in the Bible, the forbidden relationships. That will be the next part of our teachings. What are the relationships in the Bible which the Lord has forbidden? Until we meet again. God bless you and God bless this uh, uh, powerful TV that is uh, helping us to pass this message to the whole congregation and to the whole world. And may God bless Rwanda and may God bless the authorities. And this we are asking in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we have heard your word. Now we are... We are almost at the end of this uh, session, this series. We have uh, actually gathered together to speak on why God hates adultery. Elohim, I pray that every brother and sister who has been a victim of this, just like this woman, they can be coming and see us as to fulfill your word because repentance and forgiveness of sin sins should be preached and we are preaching it. They must know that they are not bound to that sin. The Lord can set them free. And we are going to see the solution of uh, what has happened if men and women were involved in these things before they knew what we have preached now and they want to find a solution from you. Lord, assist us to be back again here and give the solutions to these problems. And this we sincerely ask in the mighty name of our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. May I bless you all. Shalom.